Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and with me in the studio today is Senior Care Advisor, Ann Keefe. Ann, so glad to have you here today. I'm happy to be here. Oh, excellent. Well. It, we always have experts on our show, but I consider you a super expert because you are in our Aging Information Center where people go for all sorts of great information. And today we're going to have a pretty far-ranging discussion about Alzheimer's, dementia, different aspects. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I thought maybe we would start by talking a little bit about dementia, signs and symptoms, things of that nature. So, Okay. Um, well, Alzheimer's is um, one of the most common dementias. Um, it causes um, changes in memory, behavior, and thinking. Um, it is the most uh, prevalent of the dementias um, with uh, one in 10 people over the age of 65 affected in the United States. Um, in terms of um, other dementias, um, it is the most, uh, Alzheimer's is the most common, but there are a few other dementias. Um, one is uh, vascular dementia which is, um, I believe, it's the second most common. Mm -hmm. um, it generally involves um, problems with language mm -hmm. and um, also managing activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's uh, several different types. Alzheimer's is not the only one. Right, right. So vascular dementia is, um, a, a type of dementia that often is um, caused by um, tiny strokes to the brain. Mm -hmm. um, it has a stepwise decline and uh, memory deficits are not as apparent. Mm -hmm. However, there might be problems with language uh, and um, activities that one challenging activities that one does on a daily basis. Mm. So there's different signs or symptoms of the different mm -hmm. types of dementia. Right, right. Another one is um, dementia with Lewy bodies. That is uh, less common, um, but it uh, presents um, usually with uh, visual hallucinations. Mm -hmm. And it can also, there can also be um, a tremor and gait issues, you know, walking issues where you might notice that first. Mm -hmm. Again, short-term memory can be fluctuating, but it's not as, as Alzheimer's is the, the number one first sign that you see. It's memory. It's memory. And then there is a, a lesser known dementia called frontal temporal dementia. And that strikes, um, that caught is in a younger population people between the ages of 40 and 60. And um, it, it presents either as problems with languages, mm -hmm. uh, language in that um, there's word finding difficulties, there's, um, you know, speech becomes more non-fluent. Mm -hmm. Or it can present as behavioral. The person might be um, exhibiting sort of um, in, an inhibited, uninhibited behavior, might be a, more compulsive, might be spending more money, might be um, you know inappropriate behavior. Mm -hmm. So that that particular dementia is again, it's not as prevalent. It strikes a younger population than Alzheimer's does. Now it's interesting. There was a pretty wide range of symptoms in there, but right. with some of them, are there instances where they get confused with like, people think it's a normal sign of aging. Oh, We're, absolutely, absolutely. Um, in fact, that's one of the most common um, myths of, of uh, these dementias, in particular Alzheimer's, in that it's, it, it um, comes on so slowly that um, people think that, um, you know, oh, it's just, you know, grandma getting older or, you know, it's an old timer's disease. Um, and everybody forgets, you know, everybody, you know, um, 
has difficulty finding word, but in but it, Alzheimer's is definitely not normal aging. Mm. And so what you by the time actually families do recognize it, it you know it, um, you're well into the disease process. Mm. And so um, you know to the point where someone could be um, you know repeating, uh, repeating uh, stories or asking the same question over and over, um, becoming more um, confused about time and place. Um, where it really shows up is um, when people, let's say, who um, always knew how to cook, all of a sudden aren't cooking because they have forgotten, you know, the steps involved in a recipe. Hmm. or somebody who is um, having trouble managing their monthly bills. Hmm. Those are the two areas where that, that really is, it's just beyond, you know, just simple forgetting. Hmm. Now, I'm, you aren't a doctor, are you? No, I'm not a okay, doctor, I'm a sure social worker. <laughs> I, 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 I wanted to qualify before saying this, yeah. but you, you do talk to a lot of people who are mm -hmm. dealing with these issues. Right. How does it normally get diagnosed? Okay. Um, so the first, the first step is um, usually the, uh, is an appointment with the primary care physician. Mm -hmm. And in that appointment, um, a medical workup that will include um, urine and blood tests, um, and um, to check and see whether or not there are some underlying reasons that might be causing these dementia-like symptoms. And um, such things as thyroid problems, um, such things as um, metabolic imbalances, um, such things as vitamin deficiencies, can mimic these dementia-like symptoms. Even depression sometimes can mimic like a dementia. Mm. So um, those tests are done in order to rule out um, something that could be treated because the, some of those conditions really are treatable and can be reversed. Mm. So let's say it's not treatable. Uh, they, d they determine that there's no um, there's no underlying reason causing the dementia-like symptoms. So the next step would be to um, make a referral to a neurologist and have some screening, some scanning done of the brain. And in that, they're able to see whether there might be some brain injury, such as caused by a stroke or head injury, um, and um, which can also inform maybe it's a you know, a different type of dementia, or it could be still Alzheimer's. Um, and for further testing, um, they might be referred to a geriatric psychiatrist. And geriatric psychiatrists deal with um, some of the, um, the difficult um, changes in mood that come about through some of the personality changes that Alzheimer's presents and um, they can do further you know take a further history um, of the of the, the person um, and in some cases um, a, a neuropsychologist can do further testing um, and look at you know visual spatial because that gets involved to a person's depth perception and their their vision sort of later on in the disease process. It does not sound quick and easy to diagnose. Um, actually, you know, I was reading something recently that said a really good physician mm -hmm. is, can, you know, if they do that workup with mm -hmm. the, you know, and a good medical history, um, they can, 90% accuracy determine whether it is a probable Alzheimer's. Hmm. So they can, so there's a lot of steps involved with diagnosing, but they can get an idea. But they can get a pretty good quick. idea. Right, right. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, well, that's all for this segment of Aging Well. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.